companies tailor their uh, roles that they offer to the uh, way the campus is, right? If a campus average work experience is two years, they will typically bring roles which are, you know, with two years of experience. Uh, so getting the right role in uh, post uh, MBA it is a little bit of a challenge for people with higher work experience. I've got my career set out. Ki IIT karna tha, fir IIM karna tha, ye kare. Boss, I'm a very confused guy, <laughs> right? I postpone my decision on what to do as far away as possible. And consulting helped me do that as well, right? To have a business card which has a name of a multi-billion dollar company on it, right? Suddenly you step out and your business card says nothing. It just has your name. And nobody recognizes you anymore, right? <laughs>
and then suddenly you walk into university and there like so in in I, in IIT Bir we had like st uh, grades of people right there were fighters who fight marte rehte the then there were studs who fight marte the lekin thoda sa crack mar lete the then there were gods right when you see those gods it's a very different you feeling like bhai main kahan aa gaya <laughs> what happened why why am i here and why do you even deserve to be here right so that that kind of so, but, but what, did you end up becoming the god or where were you in oh that? no 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 i was a fighter always <laughs> fight marna padta tha and there were a couple of gods in the wing who used to help out so exam ke pehle uske room mein baith ke baith jate the but uh, again introverted small town kid suddenly coming to bombay number 1 and then iit bombay where the bunch of you know intelligent Uh, uh super uh, natural guys out there are uh, if you are from a metro and you go into an iit your resume is so accomplished tumne yahan pe extra curriculars bhi kiya hua hai tumne sports mein represent kiya hua hai state state level pe college ko aur school ko when you are from a small town you have no idea what all this is right you walk in there and it's like bas kahan se aa gaya ye log right so uh, it yeah it was an imposter syndrome to begin with but then everybody finds their place over the time in in college so right when you were at iit the goal was to get a job no um, we were so 95 is when i was in iit 95 to 99 i'm from the previous millennium uh, <laughs> uh, that was the y2k boom right so a lot of people wanted to get jobs um, uh, me i i wanted to be a core engineer right i wanted to be a mechanical engineer because I, that that was the field that i had chosen or whatever it was given to me but i thought i had chosen it eventually uh, so there are two or three paths right ek to ya to cat likh ke aim karo ya fir job le lo ya fir gre likh ke bahar jao right so eventually uh, i wanted to become a mechanical engineer i said baki sare log coding kar rahe hain mujhe coding nahi karna hai life had different uh, uh, plans for me but at that time i did not want to do coding at all i was i was the one guy who said mere ko i don't want to get into computer science at all i'm going to get out of it and uh, uh, i actually applied i took my gre and then i applied and i went uh, to the us to do my masters so i am a masters from penn state in refrigeration as well what happened after that why did you come back where did you work and then how did i am happen so late relatively yeah um so interesting 99 i graduated uh, peak of the y2k boom went abroad did my masters 2000 uh, is when we were sitting for placements right in the so there was a fall placement session and a spring placement session during the fall placement session i decided that i will just go and try out whatever job is available uh, there was a company called ingersoll rand which was hiring so i went and gave the uh, interview and got through their so called leadership program which basically puts you in different business units every year for for a period of 3 years uh, after which you can decide uh, what you want to do वैसे भी कंफ्यूज लोग हैं तो हमने सोचा ठीक है तीन साल अलग अलग चीज कर लेते हैं एंड देन विल फिगर आउट व्हाट टू डू एंड ऑफ द फॉल 2000 प्लेसमेंट्स द मार्केट क्रैशड after that whoever had postponed their uh, decision to spring of 2001 placements ended up doing their phd and their post doc and then you know getting getting into the college uh, line of teaching and stuff like that but uh, yeah i just escaped the the uh, bust uh, by getting a job so you didn't lose your job in the bust no no it was a core industry right yeah, i know but yeah. i i mean sometimes there my, are my are conviction of not doing coding was actually proved out oh, right i was, yeah, yeah, I was very mean. happy that i got into your soul rand at that time uh, yeah so so do you did you do the entire 3 years there and did you yeah. go through across all the stints so uh, uh, worked there for 3 years uh, and then uh, at the end of the 3 years when i had to decide what to do uh, ingersoll rand was just starting up their engineering center in bangalore specifically for the refrigeration and thermodynamics unit uh, they had a refrigeration unit which makes bus air conditioning and refrigerated trucks and stuff like that so we would so my boss uh, who became my boss later here was just setting that up uh, so had a quick uh, discussion with him It sounded very exciting right bade company ke andar naya chhota company chalu karne ka mauka mil raha hai so we said chalo let us try this out and i wanted to move back to uh, india anyway uh, had spent 4 years there had fun but uh, uh, it just felt Uh, the job there felt a lot more um monotonous you could see what is going to happen you know 15 years down the line where are you going to be because it was a massive organization right uh, 30 billion dollars in revenue um uh, and you know every role was defined for the next 15 years of your life thoda sa chaos chahiye tha to socha theek hai let's try this out and let's see where it goes so move back here so then you came back here uh but like again <laughs> इतने, I mean, you obviously must have been 
making decent amount of money, doing well. So, cat likhne ka booth itna late kyu uh, after having already done a masters. So, this is almost like getting one more additional degree. Uh, like, what was the logic behind that? Yeah, my hobby is collecting degrees, man. <laughs> 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 um, uh, so, um, incidentally, once I moved back here, I got married. Very funny thing happened, right? I decided when I got out of IIT to get into the technical career path, right? Which is why I did my master's in refrigeration and went into that. But then the leadership program was more supposed to be grooming you for a more general management career path. And then when I moved here, what I was actually doing was building a company from scratch. It was almost an entrepreneurial venture, right? So, um, uh, you know, getting into everything from hiring to deciding on uh, what roles the early stage people must do to go into the US and getting projects for our team to handle, uh, handling the PNL, the entire thing. Then I thought, if I have general management, karna hai, then I should at least earn what the management guys earn, right? <laughs> I should not be on an engineering salary. So, I said, then might as well try and try and do the MBA. Uh, incidentally, I was five years into WorkX. Um, so my idea was not to get into an IIM. My idea was to, uh, you know, uh, go to ISB. ISB was just starting up at that time. Uh, it was what two, three batches in at that time, right? So um, my idea was to get into ISB. I had missed the window for GRE, uh, but then they had a provision that you could do the CAT, you could write the CAT, and if you if you qualify, uh, then you can write the GRE later. Uh, before you uh, before you join, right? So I said, okay. Uh, I made this decision in August 2005. I said, okay, try it. Prep for it two three months, and then took the cat in November. Uh, and I had no idea that this will happen. Honest to God, pata nahi kaise hua, but uh, got through calls. Uh, uh, incidentally, Ahmedabad did not come. <laughs> I was mighty pissed about it, but the rest of the uh, calls were there. Um, I had also gone to SPGen for their, uh, uh, you know, uh, experienced MBA one-year course. I had also given the interview for ISBU. Sab kuch kar raha tha. You anyway seem to have a habit of filling up the whole sab form. Kuch sab kuch, everything you are going to do. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> Karna hai to at least pick, pick, you know, top five, top ten, and then try as much as you want into that. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, eventually Bangalore happened, and that was great because my wife was working here. She's an IT engineer, so best place for us. So how was your IM experience? Uh, I mean, you would have been amongst the few. Uh, I mean, although I think Bangalore had always admitted a lot of work experience folks. Uh, do you feel you should have gone to a one-year MBA, maybe done an uh, MBA abroad with more experienced folks? What was your feeling yeah. about that? Um, very uh, different experience than I am Bangalore. I have to say. Um, for one, um, in IIT, you are with peers who are of the same age group, but in IIM, I was the oldest in the batch, so they used to call me Tata in the batch. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, second, I was married, so there was married accommodation on campus. My wife loved it because there was no kitchen for two years, and her office bus used to come right outside campus, so she used to go, uh, so it was chill. She was financing me, of course, uh, so that was another part which I enjoyed. Um, but uh, uh, in terms of the experience, uh, uh, yes, I, it, I always had a feeling that I, you were overqualified for campus. Um, in terms of learning, it's great because uh, you already have worked enough so you can actually understand uh, what they are teaching in the MBA school. It is not just an extension of another classroom from undergrad to grad. Uh, you actually grasp a lot of that business uh, aspects of what they are teaching. HR was one of my favorite courses, which everybody hates in campus, <laughs> right? Um, uh, organization structure in HR, um, and uh, that has helped me a lot later in life. But um, uh, yes, that, so that was one uh, issue for sure, uh, that I, I just seemed overqualified. If you look at the placements process, for example, right? Uh, companies tailor their uh, roles that they offer to the uh, way the campus is, right? If a campus average work experience is two years, they will typically bring roles which are, you know, with two years of experience. Uh, so getting the right role in uh, post uh, MBA it is a little bit of a challenge for people with higher work experience. Uh, so that is something that I felt. Uh, I remember my seniors uh, who were in the same kind of uh, experience level calling me in the fir first week and telling me, yeah, you think you're in the Indian Institute of Management, it is actually an Indian Institute of Analysts because ultimately, you get analyst ka job analysts. Right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there was a little bit of a reality check there. But on the plus side of it, 
as an engineer you don't know that so many career options exist again right there is not not much exposure there uh, as soon as you walk in there you're like whoa what is this there is you know investment banking there is strategy consulting consulting mein teen tarah ke consulting hote hain ye pata hi nahi tha right <laughs> um, uh, and then there is what we always know from the core industry is sales hota hai marketing hota hai right that that we understand and operations and supply chain hota hai but then there are so many other things that open up uh, yeah it was it, it was quite a uh, uh, you know revealing experience in that sense but were you ever anxious about placements or once like during summers especially because because of the experience you wouldn't get that many opportunities uh, some companies just wouldn't have roles for you at all so um uh, yeah anxiety itna nahi hai kyunki worst case scenario i had actually had my conversation with my boss before i left uh, 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 ingersoll rand worst case scenario i could have gotten back to ingersoll rand <laughs> right um, uh, there are enough jobs out there for people from the core industry to go back into the core industry in management roles as well so i don't think that was a big uh, uh, issue at all there was only an upside to look at um, and the way you prep and the way you talk to people is also very different right jab pre placement talks ke liye log aate hain the questions you are asking versus the questions the rest of the people are asking so there is a you tend to stand out a little bit so that helps right so you get noticed very quickly um to uh, uh, on the um, Uh, career path side as well again right you think that i've got my career set out ki iit karna tha fir i am karna tha ye kare boss i am a very confused guy <laughs> right i postpone my decision on what to do as far away as possible and consulting help me do that as well right management karne ke baad kya karna hai pata nahi consulting kar lo consulting mein you work across industries you work across uh, functions and you try to understand as much as how companies run and then decide where you want to go after some time right so hence i said theek hai consulting sounds good so so And tell us about start. your been years uh, did you enjoy consulting uh, was it uh, what was that experience like after having worked for a core industry for most of your life i was there for 3 years 2008 to 11 again so tell us about that life as well sure um, uh, here's the second part of the uh, placement story right 2007 all of us get placed one of the best placements in campus <laughs> right and then, the and then the crash happens half the people get laid off from their investment banking jobs right they don't even get to join their companies they get their joining bonus though which is a great thing but um, uh, and again i'm saying good that i didn't get into investment banking or private equity for that matter uh, right so uh, got into consulting consulting was um, because it was that time where you know revenue was hard to come by um, it was a lot of um, uh godagiri it was a lot of hard work it was a lot of prospecting and a lot of uh, trying to figure out which client will pay you money right uh, so um uh, and again you know the fancy offsides that people do we were you know we brought it down to agra mein chalte hain right <laughs> uh, so uh, budgets were also constrained uh, but on the work experience front definitely uh, one of the best learning experience for me the amount of rigor that people have uh, in consulting in the process of problem solving right uh, it is unbelievable and that that helps you every day of your life right so every time you get to a problem which you cannot solve you you learn to break it down to chunks that can be addressed uh, uh, right it's a it's a very uh, 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 what do i say rigorous model of learning by doing uh, which which is uh, i think if anybody is thinking about getting into a career in consulting this is one of the best things that you will do and of course the network right um, uh, again iit iim ka network ke bare mein baat karte rehte hain log but um, uh, here you also have a network of people who are linked to every possible industry and at the ceo levels right so uh, it's a very different kind of a network which can actually help you a lot in your professional career going forward right um, uh, small uh, snippet when i decided to leave after a period of 3 years uh, from bain the reason why we were leaving was also we had enough of gurugram actually <laughs> uh, gurgaon at that time uh, we decided to come back to bangalore both of us hated gurgaon it wasn't to do anything with consulting it was more to do with gurgaon um so uh, uh, when we decided to move they actually had the company actually had a uh, an outplacement uh, kind of an initiative it was more informal uh, but they would actually help you connect to people that you would want to go and work with right um, i had never seen that 
coming from the Bangalore, uh, the thing you see three month notice periods and people being miserable at the end of it. That so it was exactly opposite there, um, and with good reason, right? Because eventually you will become a you know potentially you will become a client of theirs, um, and they need believers out there in the market as well. But that's a beautiful model of how you treat your employees with dignity and uh, how they come back to you because you know you've you've done good by them. Uh, so that those kind of experiences really helped. Uh, and that is where the network power comes in as well, right? So um, you left Bain and, and obviously you got an outplacement uh, from Bain into, again, I think, uh, a core industry. Uh, uh, and what was that about? And then did you suddenly feel like uh, you didn't enjoy the non-consulting life? Uh, or, or, or were you looking forward to getting into a PNL responsibility again? Like what was your mindset at that time? So consulting, mein, um, the role is more like Birbal, right? You are an advisor. You don't do much. You tell them what to do, and then hopefully help them take the first couple of steps to do it. Uh, but you're not really doing it. You're not really in the thick of the action taking those decisions. Um, I think that I felt was missing, because in my previous work experience, we were taking all the decisions, right? Um, so I was kind of missing that a bit, so I wanted to get into that kind of a role again. Um, and uh, Honeywell here in Bangalore offered me that opportunity to come in uh, and take up a PNL role, which I always wanted to do, which is why I got into general management in the first place, right? So um, uh, again, it was a small entrepreneurial venture. Uh, they they were building India for India businesses uh, with core Honeywell technology. So trying to figure out what the customer wants here, what the customer use cases are here, and then build products and solutions for them. Um, so got into that. Incidentally, um, uh, when I walked into the interview room, uh, I met one of my old friends from IIT Bombay, uh, who I hadn't met for hadn't met for 15 years. A uh, guy called Utkarsh. Um, uh, he was doing his masters in design in industrial design, IDC, IIT Bombay. Um, right. So when I walked into the interview room, I'm like, "Abey, you what are you doing And then we walked out, went for a chai, <laughs> and that's how the interview happened. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, it it was an easier uh, you know interview than most uh, most other uh, places, uh, and got in got in quickly. Yeah, no, I think this again highlights the uh, power of networks. Whether it's the consulting network, the IIT network, IIM network, uh, wherever you work, and um, just a plug from my side, you know, at Altuni we started a concept called Club Altuni, which essentially helps people uh, to be part of a uh, you know, a club of people who are dr super driven towards achieving their career goals, and we kind of help you know people get together. There are weekend sessions, there are there are mentorships, uh, and you get to be a part of that. You know, for a three month, twelve month period, you become part of a Slack community as well. Uh, and uh, so do check that out. Uh, you know, there is already a wait list uh, to get into it, uh, but we are going to go live from May with our first session. So do have a look at that and. Just that highlighting it because Ganesh has been talking about networking like five times in the last uh, you know, 30 minutes or so. So I'm saying that you know he went to IIT, went to IIM, got a chance to go to Bain, but not everybody gets that chance. And you know we at least we try and make that happen for more people. So Ganesh, coming back to you, startup ka kida kab laga? Ye sab to abhi theek hai. Now let's talk about what happening in the last 10 odd years where you've just essentially been you know part of the startup ecosystem. So there is this five-year itch. That, that I usually have, right? Uh, looking back, if I try to build how my career has progressed, it is first five years engineering kar liya, next five years management kar liya, abhi next five years kya karna hai, right? That's that's how it is broken down. Um, to um, uh, post the Honeywell uh, experience, uh, incidentally, uh, uh, Honeywell, uh, the group in which we were part of, very very high performing, diverse group of designers, of engineers, of uh, you know, marketers. Uh, it was like a mini startup ecosystem in itself, right? Um, and, and you know, sales and marketing experts as well. Uh, so learned a lot again in that group. Uh, it was like the chosen best of Honeywell India put together, um, and that that microcosm again was unbelievable. And they had similar setups in Czech Republic, in the emerging markets uh, regions, in Shanghai. Uh, and we were learning from them and what they were doing as well. So there was a lot of cross-pollination of ideas happening. Um, uh, that that was unbelievable. Uh, to work in such a big organization, again, Honeywell is a multi-billion dollar company, and work in still small groups 
like almost like a skunk works, right? The guy who interviewed me, Utkarsh, um, uh, we ended up working very closely together. We were handling the PNL together, right? Um, and uh, during that time, um, uh, what we realized was that what um, uh, the kind of work we were doing, increasingly we felt like, yeah, if we would have done this outside, it might have been an interesting thing to do, uh, right? Outside of the Honeywell corporate uh, environment. So after two years, we were just sitting together and having a, I don't know, chai beer uh, in the evening. Um, and we said, yeah, kab tak ye chakki pisenge, abhi kuch karte hain. Um, and uh, yeah, I just bro broached this as a topic. I didn't expect him to react, right? Typically, a lot of people have this conversation in post-work beers. He immediately turned around and said, chal yaar kuch karte hain. I was just waiting for somebody to ask me. I was like, huh, okay, this is interesting. Uh, and what really uh, sparked it was the fact that we were two people from two different uh, backgrounds and two different points of view completely and two different competencies, right? He comes from a design, uh, consumer experience, uh, right? Ethnography and insights from uh, watching customers, uh, uh, right? That kind of a background, creativity background. And I come from the, you know, PPT, Excel model, <laughs> market size, numbers kind of a background. Uh, PNL kind of a background that that seemed to work very well when we were doing this in Honeywell, and we said, yeah, maybe we should try this out outside. Um, so, so what was it that you all decided to? So basically, was there an idea? Yeah, it was just yeah. that we just go outside and do Yeah, that's what it was. There was no idea. <laughs> um, so you we became entrepreneurs because you wanted to become entrepreneurs, not because there was a bright idea that we have to execute this tomorrow. We wanted to do something in the retail sector. Um, cracking the consumers' buying mindset is something that both of us enjoy uh, right, doing on a day in and day out basis. Um, uh, we talk about this for hours on end all the time, uh, right? And that was the space that we wanted to get into for sure, consumer side and understanding what the consumers want to do. Uh, so our actually the thought, fuzzy thought, not really a full formed startup idea, was we should do something in the retail analytics space where we understand the consumer mind map, they call it, right? Um, uh, that was the intent with which we got out. We, again, the networks were there. Honeywell also works in the retail sector. So we had a connect to a lot of the, you know, working CXOs in the retail sector here. And when you're in the job and when you're in the thick of it, it's very hard for you to focus on what you want to do outside. Uh, and again, we are, we are in to our careers for about 15 years. Utkash was already into his career almost 18 years, right? So at that, you know, mid-management level, it is very hard for you to take time out for a side hustle, right? Um, so we said, yeah, chodke, let us try this out. So what is the name of the company? What did you start? Tell us about that. Yeah. So we started a retail analytics firm called uh, Windsleeve. So we were going and talking to retail companies, getting their data and analyzing it to get give insights on what consumers are buying and hence... So it's uh, an analytics B2B product? Pretty selling. much, pretty much. That's how it started so, off so, as. So uh, was it easy to get your clients immediately? Nope. <laughs> well, once, so 15 years, you have a business card which has a name of a multi-billion dollar company on it, right? Suddenly you step out and your business card says nothing. It just has your name. And nobody recognizes you anymore, right? <laughs> so that was a one, one big root shock that you get. And we are not people just two years out uh, of college trying to get and do something with full length in the world. We are saying, we are sorted. Log we will, we will end up cracking this anyway. Once you get out and that shock hits you, and then for the six, next six months you don't get a paycheck in your bank, is when it starts really hitting, right? Um, so um, uh, that first journey, we could not monetize. Uh, we ended up doing a couple of side projects for what the retail guys actually wanted. Um, uh, but it wasn't the analytics piece uh, that we could monetize very well. Uh, but as part of that, one thing we realized was that when we said that we will give you intelligence about your customer, right? Everybody turned back and said, how will you prove, agar ye analytics ab ho gaya and you tell me that this is the customer, how do I get my customer back into the, uh, into the store? And if the customer comes, how do I prove that he has come from me, uh, from this specific initiative, from this, you know, analytics and intelligence? Everything tended to end at that point where the customer comes and purchases, right? And we said, yaar, if we have to prove that something is happening because of you, there is that one piece of the customer purchase where the conversion actually happens, right? They call it a sales conversion. 
Um, and that is where the proof of the pudding is, whether you have actually succeeded in getting the right customer to you to buy and buy what you wanted to sell to him. I said, maybe that is a space that we should attack. And that's how Momo happened. Um, so, Momo, so, so yeah. what happened to Winsley when, like, did you sell that company or did you convert that into Momo? What happened? No, we shut it down. Um, uh, because, uh, uh, again, there was a friends and family investments and stuff like that. It was kind of messy in, in terms of a structure. Um, when we were looking at, uh, you know, doing Momo, uh, so Momo is uh, a mobile payments app that we launched in 2013, just to give you an idea. Uh, payments at restaurants, retail stores, uh, the toll road, nice road in Bangalore, we used to power. So eat, shop, and commute. This was 2013, when uh, 3G launched, you know, suddenly apps were a big thing on your phones. Um, and we saw a white space there, uh, right? Jo abhi tum Google Pay pe karte ho that we were trying in 2013. Again, it was OTP based payment. It was payment gateway on your mobile. That's, that's pretty much what it was. There was a lot of friction, but still, it was very novel in terms of a concept. And uh, we wanted to try that out. It, we, we felt it was a you know, world changing idea. And the beauty of it was you, you knew exactly what the customer was, where he was going, and what they were buying. Because we had a live bill feature as well. So you come to Fandom, you order a couple of beers, you order food we get your live bill on your phone. So we have the data of that which we can analyze. And then we started a marketing engine from you know, restaurant owners to send offers and coupons to you guys, uh, to customers to come back uh, to, the, to the restaurant as well. So that was the intent. Again, the same consumer mind map, but manifesting in the B2, B2C side. Uh, because this is a payment business, uh, it's a very thin top line business, right? Abhi, Paytm mein kitne logo ne shares <laughs> Now you will know what the PNL of that business looks like. Um, it is it is a very thin, wafer thin top uh, top line business, which means that you have to be a VC funded growth company, right? Eventually, when you will get to millions of transactions, is when you will actually start making positive unit economics. Tab tak you will have to put fight, right? Uh, that that we knew very well going in, uh, and hence uh, we said you know, uh, uh, let us figure out what the adoption curve is and let us figure out how this should grow as fast as possible. So it was a proper growth business that we wanted to get into. So how many users did you have and how big did it become and uh, why did you stop doing it after some time? Um, so uh, uh, we kicked it off uh, um, 2013. We ran it for about two and a half years. Um, Bangalore and then Pune and then we were launching Hyderabad. Uh, uh, moving to Bombay. Pune was a testing ground for launching Bombay as well, just moving to Bomb uh, Bombay. We raised a VC round, we got to almost uh, a million subscribers uh, transacting on the app, um, right? Uh, that was a great uh, achievement as far as, uh, you know, understanding what consumers want and trying to get them in and positioning it as a tech forward, funky brand, which people would want to try out. Uh, did that here, uh, right? Uh, incidentally, it wasn't, even though it was a tech product, uh, it was, marketing was all offline, right? Yahape, we used to have waiters wearing our t-shirts, uh, you know, standees on the tables, uh, bill book mein likha hua hai, pay with Momo, um, right? All those things we used to do, we used to do, right, uh, uh, fash mobs and stuff like that inside, inside the uh, restaurants uh, to catch attention. So it was a very uh, uh, offline focused marketing uh, effort, which we really, uh, Look through because if you have to pay uh, using your phone on on a location, just downloading it is not enough, right? It's not like book my show where download kar liya or where ticket book kar liya. You still have to go to the restaurant. So unless you see it at the restaurant, it's it's hard. So it was a very counterintuitive uh, customer acquisition strategy in that sense for a tech business. So we learned a lot from what is actually tech and what is non-tech and how how is a tech driven versus a tech enabled business uh, run. Right? So great experience. We ran it for about two and a half years. When we started getting into the next round of funding, what we realized was that um, a lot of the e-commerce players in the market, um, uh, Flipkart was looking for a payment solution to build in. Uh, so everybody started hitting scale and they realized that they need payment infrastructure as the core part of their business. Right. So uh, Flipkart was looking, eventually they bought PhonePay. Ola was, you know, building Ola money. Quicker, who who was building their Quicker wallet. Uh, Shopclues was there, who just turned Unicorn at that time. Uh, all of these people were looking for payment infrastructure. And uh, when we spoke to uh, Kalyan, who was at Tiger at that time, uh, he helped us connect to uh, all his portfolio companies. Delivery was looking for uh, payment uh, solutions as well uh, for their uh, COD uh, payment logistics, right? Um, 
तो when we got connected to all of them and we started talking to them, all of them said, "यार, uh, it's great. You you can be the payment layer like what Razorpay is doing right now. But guess what? We want to build it in house, and we have enough capital to build it. It's a build or buy decision, and we want to, you know, have it in house. So then all of those conversations turned towards acquisition conversations. Uh, and if the price was right, we said, "Okay, why not? Let's try this out." And eventually, we got acquired by Shopclose. Um, um, Shopclose was a unicorn at that time, um, and uh, uh, it was a you know two-year lock-in cash plus stock kind of a deal. Um, I wish I would have retired and become a you know investor by now, but uh, got to get keep the cash of it. But the stock uh, didn't go where uh, we intended it to go. Uh, but great experience with e-commerce, which then is the segue into the next side of the story of the next five years of my life. <laughs> you also need to figure out that the market is large enough, and it is something that is worth attacking, right? If you're making, if you're a big fish in a small pond, pond fir bhi chota yar, would you rather be in the ocean where you're playing, you know, in a much bigger game? That is what I would like to do, right? Play in something that actually matters. That is what uh, uh, you know I would look at.